I've been at this hospital with my kids and myself. So I, mm. it's very close to me. And to playing this Swedish doctor, uh, this whistleblower, you know, I, 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 I was all in. You know, I, I, if I would have, you know, had wrote down a dream role, it would probably be something like this. Doctor Death season two will premiere on Peacock on December twenty first. But what can fans expect from this new season? It's, you know, keeping with a the theme, it's uh, creepy, a little gruesome. Um, I will say this, this story is there's, there's a kind there's a, a juicy romance that sort of, you know, you hope for the best for two people falling in love. Um, and you can uh, certainly expect there's to watch blood. that unravel. Yeah. There's blood, yeah. there's, there's sort Murder. of gross, uh, yeah. uh, bile, uh, rats, there's rats, yeah. but there's also, um, three people wrestling with uh, principles uh, in, in inside of their professional practice and trying to uh, balance their self-interest and the kind of longer road of human interest, which um, that's our story. And that's pretty good, too. Absolutely. <laughs> and but uh, Gustav, I want to ask you this. Uh, your character, Anders, runs Paulo's clinical trials. Um, but do you think he believes what Paulo is doing since it's something that no one has ever really done before yeah but you know the thing is that it's said that he has done some some uh, trials with uh, with pigs and 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 you know that so i think my anders is a little bit surprised that he wants to go back to, to you know to to basic and i think that he 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 is a doctor that that actually d doesn't agree with the the speed of everything well I, nathan or luke's character is more you know down to earth uh, so i i think anders is into the work and into into research uh, but pretty early on he he kind of discovers that there's something not really right here going on you know there's something fishy uh, so i think he's kind of sober to to the fact he doesn't get you know swept away with paolo because he's not that kind of person like anna and a lot of other people but he's interested in, in you know doing the work uh so he, he through the work he finds out that there's something fishy going on of course and luke i want to ask you this your character nathan as soon as he meets paulo he has his doubts about him so what is it about paulo that doesn't make nathan a fan i think there's a, a couple of things i mean I, I think for for nathan i think that his 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 principles are rooted in um you know the the, the strength and power of scientific thought which you know empiricism peer review the long road of of research versus the promise of a panacea you know the answer the cure all i think that that's that sort of rings a bell for nathan and puts him on guard i think also you know he's probably a little bit envious of this guy's uh smoothness how clearly you know how good he is at greasing the wheels um, I think there's a, you know, I think there's a degree of envy that exists that, you know, that Nate is a bit, um, yeah, put off by. Right. Yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. And this question is really for both of you and Gustav, I'll start with you. Um, you mentioned Ashley and she's not here with you guys right now, but, uh, how is it, you know, working with her and seeing her portray the character Anna, uh, Anna? Yeah, it was I, I, it was great. Of course, she, she's a fantastic actress, and the, I think the the the, the build up with this three character, I, me and, and Luke, we were close friends in the story, and, and you know, so Anna was a little bit more distant, and then but then in the story, she kind of came in, and in the end, we end up work together. So I think there was. Um, uh, you know she, she's a great actress and she, it's always fantastic to work with great actors yeah she really was it's a surprise a yeah. great sort of she really is the the sort of the rudder to our our little team you know yeah uh, mm -hmm. anna actually is probably the most gifted of the doctors mm -hmm. you know um and also for the dynamic really she's, tough she's, yeah. you know mm -hmm. and, and and she really does kind of get she sort of She's the she has that follow through uh, yeah. to the to the bitter end. 
Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they need, uh, they all three need each other. It wouldn't be, be done without anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And Gustav, I'll ask you this. Um, from what I understand, you're one of the first, if not the first to audition for the series. Um, ultimately, what drew you to the story and your role? Well, you know, uh, playing a whistleblower, I, you know, I love it. Uh, sometimes you want to play the villain, uh, the bad guy, but <laughs> in this case, you know, because it's set in Sweden also. So I could relate to this. As I said, you know, I've been at this hospital with my kids and myself. So mm -hmm. I, it's very close to me and to playing this Swedish doctor, uh, this whistleblower, you know, I, 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 I was all in, you know, I, I, if I would have, you know, had r wrote down a dream role, it would probably be something like this. So. Right. And yeah. And Luke, I'll ask you, you know, this story, you know, is based on the podcast It's a story that's going on right now. Um, it continues. So um, was that the fact that, you know, Paulo is such was doing these experimental um, operations and you know the fact that he got caught is that what ultimately um wanted you to be part of the series i i found you know i, I found the the whole thing really compelling you know i, I it, it uh it, it, i found the story suspenseful i found that i you know i found the dynamic of the three of us to be really felt very kind of pure bred in in, in the pulse of its heart um and and you know playing somebody who was as principled as as Nathan is and as stubborn you know there was something very appealing and compelling about that and the fact that they get to you know they did they didn't shy away from the reality that people that kind of um stand up to institutions of this scope usually mm -hmm. pay a, a hefty price for it you know mm -hmm. that's kind of that's that that is that the reality of that i felt was addressed and didn't kind of over romanticize you know what it is to to be to be a whistleblower you know it comes it comes at a cost yeah of course absolutely mm -hmm. and gustav i'll ask you this um after working on this series uh what's the one thing you took away um when it comes to the issues uh seen in the healthcare system well, I, you know, it's, it's, first of all, I would never think this would happen at this prestigious hospital in Sweden when they, where they hand out the Nobel Prize. But obviously, it, it can happen everywhere. And I, you know, the, the sad thing is that you have to be uh, going to the hospital, you know, don't, you can't be sick because then you can't get help, you know. Uh, so, but uh, it's, you have to look out for yourself and, you know, it's, you have to, if it's as Luke said, if it's good to be too good to be true, it, you know, you should ask yourself, could it be that? But you're so extremely vulnerable when you go to a hospital and you just want help, and you rely on, you, you just rely that on that people would, would. This is the place where they will give you the help. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Know, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's depressing that this, what is, but also, you know, one thing that you have to, you know, stand up for the truth, yeah. you know, and you, and when you do that, you know, it's, it's, it, you become a better person yourself, even though if you can't change the world, you, you know, you, you're going to love yourself more and, and the people around you, your friends and your family, they're going to, you know, they're going to love you more. That's the whole right. Thing. Exactly. Absolutely. And Luke, I'll ask you this final question. What's the biggest uh, thing you took away um, when it comes about the healthcare system after working on this series? That it's very complicated. You know, I, I, you know, I, you know, health practitioners I know who are very, who I'm very close with have always said, be your own advocate. And I think that the, that is, you can walk away from this experience saying the same thing. Um, I think it's really important to be on the watch, you know, in this field. Um, but I think that, you know, you should be on the watch for when you're being sold a bill of goods that is too good to be true. I think it's also fair to say that there are, you should also be on the watch for uh, the goodness that's out there. I've spent a lot of time in hospitals being treated for, you know, for various illnesses and, and have walked away from it being nothing but thankful for, you know, the nurses that helped me get through all of that, you know, so I, I, it's, it's a kind of, um, it's an ongoing experiment. We know that medicine saves lives. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, 
it, yeah. it hopefully it will continue that way I think so. I absolutely agree. Well, Gustav, Luke, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it and continued success to both of you. Okay. Dr. Death season two premieres on Peacock on December 21st. Uh, you worked on season one. So how would you best describe this new season? Ooh. So this season, we are focused on a doctor named Paolo Macchiarini, who is a researcher and a surgeon, and he's working on these, developing these biosynthetic tracheas. And the throat is a very difficult place to work, notoriously kind of complicated in medicine. So as he's making advancements, his groundbreaking research is earning him this insane international reputation. But there are a few of his colleagues at Karolinska, the hospital in Sweden where he's working, that start to question some of the research that got him to this point. And at the same time, we have this really exciting and interesting story in the love side of things with Benita Alexander, who's an investigative journalist that initially contacts Paolo to do a piece on him. And as we sort of follow two sides of, of Paolo's life, the medical and the personal, and as both sides of those start to try to strip away some of the magic behind this medicine that he's developing. Absolutely. And Patrick, I'll ask you this. And actually, Michael kind of alluded to this. Uh, season two is interesting because it's almost telling two different stories. There's a romantic side with, with Paolo and Bonita. And then there's Paolo and the three doctors who eventually become whistleblowers. So was that one of the things that drew you to this story? It's funny that you say that. That is literally the thing that drew me to this story were the whistleblowers. Mm. Um, I... Look, when we first set up the show uh, in 2018, uh, the goal was always to evolve the show from season to season to hopefully take what was familiar, uh, but then build off of it and and hopefully deepen it and and focus it even more um, and and ground it even more. And, and when Ashley Michael took over for season two, um, you know, the perspective on the whistleblowers was the thing that I felt was was not was most novel to the story. I know it's very the romance is another side of it. But I felt like we had this opportunity with these whistleblowers to truly look at how the, they were complicit in helping, in many ways, Paolo Macarini get to where he got. But at the same time, then recognizing within themselves that they it was their responsibility, that they had that they were held to account for what they had done and that they had to somehow rectify it. And I felt like that was the part of the story that also was could most benefit our viewers in the fact mm -hmm. of giving of saying to people that you can be empowered to speak up when you see something that isn't right when you see something that isn't equal right and that was the part of the story that i just i loved again i think mandy and edgar have a phenomenal other storyline that i think is, is is equally compelling but if you ask me it was the whistleblowers that i, that I latched on to so yeah it's, good. it's great absolutely actually michael and ask you uh, edgar ramirez plays paulo um, ultimately, what made you and your team want to cast him as the lead character for this season? Well, you know, Jennifer Morrison, who directed the first four episodes and I, um, went to meet with Edgar early on to try to, you know, convince him to come to our show, <laughs> to beg him to do the show, because uh, he was in my mind early on. And mm -hmm. he just really physically, emotionally charmingly personifies all of the good things of Paulo. He also speaks all the languages that Paulo speaks and he worked as before he started acting, he was an investigative journalist. So he sort of had that, you know, insight into the Benita side of the story. Um, but he just, he really, I think most importantly, he came at this character in such a thoughtful way that it was clear that he was going to be the best person to tell this story. Um, he, he was focused on making sure that we were showing the nuances of Paulo. This guy is working in, in a very complicated, as I said, a very complicated field, and there's really no other work there to build off of. So he was doing what he thought in his mind was necessary in order to move medicine forward. Of course. And Patrick, I'm going to ask you, Mandy Moore plays Benita. You know, you talk about how you enjoyed the whistleblower side of the story, but how was it seeing uh, Mandy and Edgar interact and have um, their characters go through the ups and downs of their relationship? Well, look, I'm going to I'm going to kick that over to Ashley Michael in a second. But what, yeah. what I will say uh, is as, as somebody who was sort of watching it go from script stage into the production stage, 
Um, the oppor- I never imagined Mandy in the role, not for any mm. reason th- that I didn't think that she would be right, but it was more the fact that I couldn't imagine that she would do it. And that is in no way, by the way, a denigration no. of the scripts. The scripts were very, very I'm with good. You. <laughs> but it's Mandy Moore. I mean, and, and so yeah. when you're in this business and you have the opportunity to work with someone like that, of that caliber, right? I, I, it was it was really more just like, you know, like a pot of gold fell into our into our laps with her. So we had our audition and we saw who was going to, she she had, I'm kidding. She had, um, she had actually had a baby six weeks before we started shooting. So the fact Uh, that she was interested in telling the story at all, let alone at this point in her life and moving her family to New York. I mean, it was a no brainer that for her, she also, she, she's so right for the character. You know, it's not that she can do, she can play anything, but this is, I think this is a little bit of a departure for her from roles that we've seen before. And and she brings this real warmth and um, this trustworthiness to screen. And it's she just brings that character in to life in such a nuanced way. We are just grateful that she wanted to be a part. Of, I mean, the entire cast is just like, mm-hmm. can't believe that these are the actors that wanted <laughs> to tell our story with us. So we're happy. Of course. And Patrick, I want to <laughs> ask you. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of the cast, the whistleblowers are played by Luke, Ashley and Gustav. And they all bring something different um, when it comes to their characters. So how is it, you know, seeing them telling these stories? Because they all have, the characters all have different viewpoints when it comes to Apollo and what they believe in, in terms of what he can do in terms of his operations. So how is this uh, seeing them portray these individual stories and working together to seek the truth? Mm. It's funny, as you were as you were talking, I'm like, I imagine like they're like the devil, the angel, and like the court jester on your shoulder. Mm. Like, yeah. you know, they're all coming at it from a different point of view, as you said, but and but they're all right. They're all right in a lot of ways, and they're all wrong in a lot of ways. You know, they're they're all working under the same flawed medical system that Paulo's working under. So, you know, when we see them, uh, when we see Paulo take advantage of some of these loopholes, specifically in compassionate care, um, you know, this is something that unfortunately I think happens more than we think. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's interesting to watch characters go through the process that Paulo went through to get there and then have the wherewithal to take a step back and realize the lines that they've crossed ethically and emotionally, personally, and and choose to do the right thing, which is to speak up and try to hold people accountable, including themselves, for their actions. And and that's something that we see them do this season, which is great. Of course. And Patrick, I'm going to ask you this. Um, you've worked on the show for two seasons now. Um, what's the one thing you've learned about the healthcare system, um, you know, in terms of, you know, who can you trust and just just in general, just um, how how patients interact with doctors. So our production company, Littleton Road Productions, we have a philanthropic and a social action arm to the company uh, that was built with Dr. Dr. Death season one. Uh, and uh, the goal of the social action campaigns for seasons one and two is to is to bring a light uh, to the general public, not just on the fact that there are some bad players in the industry and that there are systemic uh, issues always at play, but that they can also be empowered to be able to take their own health into their own hands. And we try to provide tools to them to be able to uh, look into their doctors, right, to to give them the, the questions that they should ask um, uh, primarily. What I want to also say to what you just asked is that while we were doing season one, it's a story I say all the time, we were in the middle of the pandemic. We were at the beginning of the pandemic when we started mm-hmm, it. Yeah. And, and and I always remember how everyone was in the streets, banging pots, clapping, you know, encouraging these doctors to get back in, in into the fight every single day. And I was making a show that in a reductive term, you could say is all about bad doctors, where in reality, the vast majority of our medical practitioners are really good people who put their lives uh, and their time and their energies on the line every single day in order to keep us healthy. And and so for me, I try to look at, at that side of the story. And that, I guess, is another reason why I love the whistleblowers so much is that they shine a light on the truly good people who are out there who are truly fighting for us every single day. Of course. Well, Ashley, Michael, Patrick, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it and continued success to both of you.